Hey everyone, I'm Noah, a game developer, and this is a video about how I created the White Bird. Like all game development projects, it's a story full of ups, downs, challenges, triumphs, and lessons learned. Hopefully this will show you what it's like being an indie game developer, as well as the journey one goes through to bring a video game to life. But first of all, thank you to Thomas Brush for sponsoring this video. He's the creator of two beautiful indie titles. He's also made a fantastic 2D game kit for the community. He actually created a game for PewDiePie with this exact kit, so consider downloading it while it's free. There's no gimmicks and you can use it however you like for commercial or personal use. Just click below and he'll send it to you immediately. With that said, back to the devlog. Let's begin in June of this year, after my brother and I released a colourful party game called Oroboro. Following that, we indulged in a rather lengthy summer holiday where I read tons of books, procrastinated, exercised, went on an epic camping trip, and wrote lots of vague game ideas in this orange notebook. In late August, I took one of these ideas and turned it into a rough playable prototype using my favourite game engine, Unity. The art was crude, the polish almost non-existent, but at least I could get a feel for the core mechanics and interactions. The basic idea was to make a real-time, fast-paced card game, a mix of side-scrolling action and strategic card play. I got quite excited by this concept and spent an extra week refining the world and making some nicer looking artwork. Cards cost energy and get you shooting fireballs and flying in midair to dodge enemies. There's some that stop you from moving so you can recharge, destroy obstacles and draw more cards from your deck. Unfortunately, it just wasn't very fun to play and I quickly lost my motivation for this specific experiment. Shortly after that failure, I received my brand new drawing tablet, this time with a screen so I can actually see my hands while drawing. This made the whole painting process a real joy. It feels so smooth and fresh. And so I began work on a game that would explore epic scale and feelings of awe and discovery. Like with Shadow of the Colossus, I wanted to create an experience with a tiny player, dwarfed by crumbling monuments, enormous environments, and ancient stone warriors. I would go for a minimalist art style and controlling a little white bird who could fly give the player a lovely sense of freedom and space. After making a few such scenes though, I soon grew discontent with the overall look. It just felt a bit flat and boring, so I decided to challenge myself and unlike most of my projects which feature simple chunky art, I tried creating something more detailed and textured, but that would still feel vibrant, otherworldly, and be filled with movement and life. Some of you may know that I absolutely love tiny worlds. Dashing Fire, my second commercial game, is all about jumping between little squishy planets. And so that's why I made a lush, bouncy planet. For this style, I would find images online and use those as a base to create interesting shapes and textures. You start with a sketch, then meticulously fill up that rough skeleton with colour, shadows and highlights. One of the big challenges is adding animations and interactions to this static, detailed piece of art. Most cartoony visuals are quite easy to animate. For example, I could make a simple character and slice him up so I can then move each body part independently in Unity. This gets a lot more messy when making detailed artwork with lots of tiny bits and pieces. So for this first scene, I used the all-in-one shader asset pack to add a tiny bit of round wave-like motions to the planet. It's very subtle, but now it looks like the grass is stirring under a gentle breeze. Then I added tiny birds which fly around, dodging the player. Again, these help add movement and life to a static environment. You'll also notice tiny particles that emit from the grass and golden tree, as well as calming water. These are simple particle effects, little details that are such fun to make. And I kept going, making a cute deer munching on some grass, as well as bursts of leaves when the player collides with the planet. Later on I would also add post-processing, more fluffy clouds, and an entire hidden layer, but more on that later. With the visual feel of the world in mind, I eagerly got to work making more scenes, such as this peaceful stone golem, a tiny village perched on a floating island, a crooked haunted tower, and lots more. Before we continue, you can play the white bird for free right now with the link in the description. So if you want to experience this little adventure with fresh eyes, I recommend you play before watching the rest of this video. Now despite being very happy with the overall look, I was beginning to worry about gameplay, or more specifically, the complete lack of it. All you could do was fly around interesting looking scenes. I ignored the gameplay problem and spent lots of time on tasks that should have been very low on the priority list, such as scene transitions, a map where you can select scenes, or even a secret hidden layer which I mentioned earlier. For scene transitions, I basically took a screenshot of the scene, 
then overlaid it on top of the actual scene and animated it using various shaders, changing hue and posterized attributes to create this cool exotic effect. It's certainly more interesting than just a classic fade into black. For the secret layers, I wanted to remake every single scene so it looks old, parchment-like and mysterious, like something you might have torn out from an ancient Leonardo da Vinci notebook. I did this with a couple magic Photoshop tricks and using stained paper images found online. Then I would put this image on top of the existing scene and hide it by setting mask interaction to only visible inside mask. This way I could animate a sprite mask to slowly reveal the parchment layer. Basically the same technique I used on my game The Dreadful Whispers two years ago with its reveal mechanic. This entire project was a real artistic experiment and I was trying hard to push past my comfort zone and innovate on world building, environments and creatures. All game projects will begin in slightly different ways. Mine began looking like this and slowly warped into something completely different. The tiny player is still small but I was no longer trying to dwarf the protagonist by surrounding him with giants and massive environments. Rather, I was exploring extremely weird and quirky places, something straight out from an imaginative and wacky dream. I was discovering the project as I went, trying to figure out what this world wanted to become. This is an interesting way to create, but it's also a little risky. A more reliable and straightforward method is beginning with a gameplay prototype, and if the mechanics and interactions are fun, building on top of that with story and art. Instead, I began with arts and struggled turning these scenes into a playable experience. At some point, the game would be called The White Wizards and see the player cast polymorph spells to transform enemies into fluffy white sheep. At another stage in development, it was going to be a top-down shooter. One morning, I came up with what sounded like a brilliant idea on paper. It would be a mix of haunting music, reflexes, and quick strategic brainstorming, but it was a complete flop in practice. Finally, I came to the conclusion that this game's strength is the art and the feeling of wonder at discovering the various scenes and secret layers. I didn't need any complex systems or golden mechanics. Something simple could do the trick just fine. So now you can right-click to speed up and cast a ring of protection which destroys gooey creatures. On the flip side, whenever you're in this attacking state, you shrink, and if you're too tiny, you lose. You must wait to expand again. It's a balance between attack and defense, and it's really fun squeezing through narrow, twisting tunnels and crashing against crumbling walls. I tried my best at keeping the game relaxing and easy, leaning in on that core experience of discovering a beautiful world and not trying to add extra playtime by ramping up the difficulty. The White Bird is an adventure that lasts between 10 to 15 minutes, but hopefully the short time spent is enjoyable and inspiring. For the final scene, the White Bird transcends from a fluffy white ball to something a lot more elegant and magical, an ethereal creature made of powerful light. These smooth tail and wing-like motions were made following the techniques Owen Senior, a fellow indie game developer, shared with me a while back, in which I in turn shared with you in this 2D procedural animations tutorial. After uploading this video, I'll be going to Canada. This trip turns into a tangible deadline for me, something I really needed or risked falling into the traps of perfectionism and procrastination. And so I finished The White Bird with lots of simple, juicy sound effects. Ambient soundtracks add life to every scene, and I tried adding a sound effect to every interaction, from the simple click of a button to the collision with these unlock spots. Randomizing the pitch helps add variety, even when using only one sound file. All in all, the game took one month to complete, and as always, I try to keep a steady rhythm. I always feel like I could have finished sooner, but then remember that taking time away from a project is part of the process, and sometimes ideas and inspiration need time to mature in the subconscious, relaxed mind. With The White Bird complete, after my Canadian trip, I'll be tackling new games. There's so many ideas I'm curious to try out, from gothic cathedral building projects to tiny chess-like board games with chunky miniatures. I really hope you'll enjoy The White Bird. Guys, let me know what you think of the game in the comments. Your feedback is a great help and teaches me what I did right and wrong so I can improve and create a masterpiece for you all. Stay tuned, subscribe for many more game dev tutorials and devlogs such as this one. Cheers!